Late game, Lamont Wade Jr. does it again. Huge hit in the ninth inning of the, as the Giants come back and beat the Rockies in the ninth inning. A day after blowing out the Rockies behind Logan Webb. And with the sweep of the Rockies, the Giants improved to 90-50, and 50, their best start through 140 games in almost 100 years. So we have a lot to talk about on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Download the app and join me on Sunday toward the end of the game to get in on the action. So coming up on today's show, we are going to talk about the last couple of San Francisco Giants games. Really wanted to talk exclusively about uh, the game last night, but then I kind of forgot that this was a day game. So as is typical for us, when there's a day game after a night game, that day's podcast on the second day doesn't come out until after that second game. And so it turned out to be two great games to talk about. It does seem like sometimes when we do that, Uh, The finale of a series ends up being a clunker and we have to focus on the good one, even though a bad one just happened. And it was looking like that was going to be the case again today. But the Giants came back in the ninth inning. And like I said, late game Lamont, a uh, nickname, I guess, coined by Greg Papa, as far as I can tell, today on Giants postgame live. And it seems to be a more and more appropriate nickname as time goes on. Lamont Wade Jr. has just had big hit after big hit late in games. And consistently, I mean, to be really specific about it, he's hit the ball like to that exact same spot that he hit it today, kind of pulled into right field for a hit over the second baseman in front of the right fielder. He's done it against Jansen a couple of times, Kenley Jansen of the Dodgers. He's he did it today. He's he he had a hit down the line against the Diamondbacks. He's had some huge, huge hits in the ninth inning. And like I said, this was looking like a game the Giants were going to lose. They were down by a run going into the ninth. Evan Longoria added a huge two-run double uh, in that ninth inning to give the Giants some cushion because in Coors Field, having a one-run lead uh, going to the bottom of the ninth is almost like being tied. It's just not a comfortable lead at all. And so those extra two runs were huge. Uh, Before I get going here, though, I want to Remind everyone who's listening or tell you if you haven't heard that this show is now on YouTube. So hello to those of you uh, watching on YouTube. And if you haven't checked us out there yet, please do. It is a lot of fun. And I hope that, you know, you can listen wherever and then just also check it out on YouTube from time to time or whatever uh, suits your interests. So, yeah, coming up on today's show, a lot of good to talk about. The Giants improved to 90 and 50 their best start through 140 games since I think 1914 was the note that I saw on Twitter about that. So it's obviously just an incredible start and the Giants have 22 games remaining. And so that means if they just go 10 and 12 over their last 22, they would finish with 100 wins. So, you know, 90 wins already is a great season and they've got 22 games to just continue to rack up these wins. But unfortunately for the Giants, they're playing in the NL West, meaning, you know, they've got a really good Dodgers team to contend with. And that Dodgers team has taken the first two games against the Cardinals. They play the finale of that series, unless it's a four game series. I actually don't know, but they play the Cardinals tonight. Uh, The fact that it's a night game tells me it may be a four game series. I could just look, but, you know, suffice it to say the uh, the Giants are hoping that the Cardinals can pull out a win here. And the Giants could gain a little separation in the National League West. Currently a game and a half 
So if the Dodgers win, that number goes to, uh, back to one game. And if the Dodgers lose, the Giants can have a two-game lead in the division. Just a little bit of breathing room as the schedule pretty much winds down here. We're uh, approaching the weekend. I, guess, I mean, it's Wednesday. I, I, we, once Sunday comes around, there's just three more weeks left in the season. So let's talk a little bit about the specifics, though. In this game, I would say the heroes were Brandon Crawford, who just delivered a crucial three-run homer that tied the game uh, after the Giants had fallen behind three to nothing. He comes back and hits a three-run homer in the top of the sixth inning. It was kind of a theme for the Giants in this series is that they just put a ton of pressure on the Rockies offensively. And today it was, you know, they weren't so much, but then uh, they they just set the table for themselves a few times and they absolutely delivered in a huge way when they were able to set the table. So Brandon Belt had a big game, three hits today. Lamont Wade Jr., obviously the huge hit in that ninth inning. Brandon Crawford with the three-run homer. Uh, Mike Yastrzemski had to leave, leave the game after fouling a ball off his ankle, and that's how Longoria entered the game. Longoria entered into Yaz's spot uh, and delivered that huge two-run double in that top of the ninth. So, you know, and how about this? Buster Posey didn't start the game, but he pinch hit, which I thought was key in two ways. Number one, you know, the pinch hit, Buster Posey pinch hit to lead off the top of the ninth and drew a walk which got the four-run rally started. But then secondly, I give credit to Gabe Kapler for being willing to make that move here in September, uh, sensing the you know that the end is near and pushing Buster Posey a little bit. Early in the season, they really made it a point to not use Buster Posey when he was having a day off. But here we are in September, and they're pushing it a little bit. They said that they would, and they are. And that was key. I mean, Buster Posey, just his presence there in the batter's box in the ninth inning, I think, was sufficient to rattle the pitcher a little bit, uh, Estevez. And he issued a four-pitch walk, and then immediately uh, Posey was lifted for a pinch runner, and that got things going. Tyro Estrada came up next and had a two-strike hit. And then Brandon Belt, there was just a critical kind of mistake by the second baseman, Brendan Rodgers, for the Rockies, who uh, dove on a ground ball and then just like inexplic inexplicably didn't throw to first base. So anyway, we don't need to get into all the details, except that late game Lamont very well may be a nickname that sticks. And just the fact that the Giants are 90 and 50, it's absolutely incredible. You know, this is something that I might have said I would expect under Farhan Zaidi eventually, but I wouldn't have said even me, who has been higher on the Giants than most ever since basically Zaidi took over and started making moves, uh, I thought they were going to have, have a good season this year. But the fact that they're 90 and 50 through 140 games, I would have thought you were kind of crazy to even suggest that before the season. But that's the reality of it. So we just uh, need to enjoy it and really hope that they end up, you know, not just having to be subjected to the one game playoff. But at this point, they're Odds of at least being in the wild card game are pretty much 100%. That magic number, I believe, is down to seven with the win. And if the uh, Reds, I kind of fell out of touch yesterday. I think it's the Reds and Padres tied right now. So if one of them loses tonight, then the Giants, I think, would reduce their magic number to six. So coming up next, uh, we'll probably look at that a little bit. But I also want to talk about the game yesterday, Logan Webb. I thought was really, really good, despite the fact that his streak of 14 consecutive starts with two earned runs or fewer came to a close. So coming up next, we will discuss that. But first, this episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Greenroom is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll be hosting rooms for Locked On Giants once a week. Yes, you can finally join in on the conversation you listen to here every day. Green Room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the league. You'll have a chance to chat with me and might even have a chance to be featured on the Locked on Giants podcast through our Green Room conversations. Be, be sure to join me this week. I'll be hosting a room on Sunday towards the end of the game. 
Go to go download the free Green Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the MLB group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Ben Kaspic to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss it. I'm planning to be live on Sunday towards the end of the game, so I can't wait to see you there and hear your thoughts on the Giants. Green Room, changing the way we talk sports. Did you know that 85% of people who play daily fantasy sports lose? Is it really that surprising, though? The game is rigged against you. You're playing against thousands of other lineups, not to mention experts who have more tools and more time. You don't stand a chance. Introducing Stat Hero is the first ever daily fantasy sports book that puts the player in control and winning within reach. Here's how it works Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in a head to head fantasy matchup. You name your stakes, winner take all. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups ahead of time. No one else does that. In normal daily fantasy sports, you might be enter- in- entering a contest with hundreds of other people who have set lineups, and the odds of someone just getting lucky and having the winning lineup, even if they're not the best uh, at choosing a lineup, are high. And so for me, that's why I don't play. It feels like the game is rigged against you. Go to stathero.com slash locked on, sign up for free, and right now you can get three times back on your first play. They're giving you 300% match, a 300% match. That's unheard of. Go to stathero.com slash locked on, stathero.com slash locked on. All right, as promised, we're going to talk more about the Giants whooping on the Rockies over the last three days. Kind of unbelievably, they played the late Sunday game, uh, Sunday night baseball, fly, get in late to Colorado, and then play a day game because of the holiday. On Monday, Giants you know, erupt offensively, and Kevin Gosman was really good in that game. And then in game two, they come out behind Logan Webb, and he goes seven innings, just like Kevin Gosman, also three earned runs allowed. Seven innings, three runs in Colorado is just a fantastic start, and the Giants got that back-to-back from uh, Kevin Gosman and Logan Webb. Kervin Castro made his Major League debut. He was added to this roster prior to uh, one of the games in Colorado. I can't remember if it was prior to the second or prior to the first, but he made his Major League debut and to me was really impressive. He's very young, 22 years old, showed some poise and showed some good stuff, an upper 90s fastball and a good breaking ball. So welcome to the Major Leagues, Kervin Castro, just a nice clean win for the Giants, 12-3 to in that second game. And then they come out today, look like they're going to just lose one. And I was ready, frankly, to come on here and talk about how, you know, it's a series win and you feel good about it, even though you're leaving town with a loss. But the Giants just uh, put a cherry on top here and end up leaving town with a sweep. They're the first team to sweep the Colorado Rockies in Denver this season. The Rockies have been fantastic in Colorado this year, and the Giants are the first team to sweep them, and and really it was a dominant sweep. The first two games were especially dominant. Today, I would say it was pretty evenly matched. The Rockies scored three in the bottom of the fifth, and then the Giants answered right back, but then the Rockies answered back themselves to take a 4-3 to three lead, and then the Giants in the ninth pounded out four runs. So ultimately, they score, what, 12, 12, and 7 runs in this series. So they just explode for over 10 runs per game, and that's what we were hoping would happen. Remember, of course, they were struggling a bit offensively against the Brewers and a little bit against the Dodgers. Remember that first game against L.A. that went extra innings and the Giants just could not you know, get that money hit and drive in runners when they were on base. But coming into Colorado, you knew that they had a chance to kind of uh, correct course with that. And I would say in the game of baseball, it's not predictive. Like if you just struggle in those situations in a small sample, it doesn't really mean anything. And the, the key point is that if you're consistently setting the table and consistently hitting for power the way the Giants have, at some point, something good is going to happen. And 
you know, so that's why we don't panic on this show about little stretches where they're struggling in certain situations and eventually they're going to break through. And that's what happened here in this little series against the Rockies. So, you know, some history was made in the second game. The Giants first three batters of the game doubled for the first time in San Francisco Giants history. It's kind of hard to believe that that's never happened before, but it hadn't. And you know, the Giants were off to the races immediately, scored three runs in the first, two runs in the second. They were, you know, they had so many extra base hits. I actually don't have the number pulled up here. La Stella, I'm not going to count. They had too many to count, and they only hit one home run. And I'm not going to get into this too much, but the concept that it's a good thing that they didn't hit more home runs, like, oh, great, they were able to uh, score a lot of runs without hitting homers. I don't buy that at all. Home runs are great. I don't care if you hit them or don't hit them. Scoring a ton of runs is good. If you hit home runs to score a ton of runs, that's also good. It's not like home runs are gimmicky and cheap. You don't get, you know, it's the best type of contact, right? It's like you're just hitting the ball especially well that it's able to go over the fence. And <clears throat> so I'm not like thrilled that they were able to score 12 with only one home run. By the way, it came off the bat of Mike Yastrzemski, and by the way, I don't think I've even mentioned it yet. Steven Duggar was like the highlight of this game. And so if today's game had been a night game, we would have spent pretty much, I mean, not the whole show, but a lot of the show uh, from the second game of the series talking about Steven Duggar. So I regret that I haven't hadn't mentioned him until now, but Duggar had two triples and a double in this game. He also tripled, of course, on Sunday against Walker Bueller. So he has made a real impact since... Uh, being called back up when I think it was when Dickerson went on the injured list. But today, I mean, Duggar had a bit of a rougher game, ends up going one for five. I think he had a, a single, if memory serves. Yeah, the Giants did not have a lot of extra base hits today. Just the double by Longoria in the ninth and the home run by Crawford. Everything else was singles out of their 11 hits. So nine singles. How about that? Just goes to show you that extra base hits are better. Uh, the Giants in uh, the second game for a long time had about as many hits as the Rockies but ended up outscoring them 12 to 3 so that's the beauty of extra base hits of course but Steven Duggar I mean he's an interesting guy to talk about uh, we talked about him a lot when he was doing well how a lot of it looked unsustainable and I think we see a little bit of that today the the strikeout is an issue for him he needs to maintain you know, it, it, he's right on the cusp of it being like too high. And if it if it kind of elevates at all, then he, he's going to have problems maintaining uh, the gains. But I would say that it's clear just by watching the quality of his plate appearances that he's just been a much improved player this season. And, you know, he's proved that over the first few games since being called back up today. Not so much. He had some big strikeouts kind of in some big situations, but. You know, he's not a perfect player who is, uh, but it's good to see Steven Duggar having success. And he definitely had his moment uh, on Tuesday with, you know, he was the player of the game for me. And the big hit of the game came off his bat. It was bases loaded, two outs, two strikes, laid off some tough pitches and then drilled a bases clearing. I, I can't remember if that one was a triple or a double. I think it was a triple. He was just a triple machine. So Coming up next, we'll have to save our discussion about Logan Webb uh, for next. So we'll talk about Logan Webb, talk about the status of the bullpen, and talk about where the Giants stand here uh, going into the off day in Chicago tomorrow. So all of that is coming up next. But first, did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really for, uh, something for everyone. If you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. I'm partial to uh, mint brownie. It's one of my favorite combinations. Uh, I love mint and I love brownie. And if you put them together, it tastes like a candy bar in these built bars. Uh, but the beauty is that the health profile uh, is that they're they're not like candy bars. They're only having four to five grams of sugar. I I hate when a candy bar is rocking close to 20 grams of sugar. It's like, it's not really a candy bar, or excuse me, it's not really a protein bar at that point. It is a candy bar, but Built Bar manages to taste that way, but come in with a much healthier profile. 
So 17 to 18 grams of sugar, just 130 to 180 calories, and like I said, low in sugar as well. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part is that there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right. As promised, we are going to dive a little bit into Logan Webb's outing. Just kind of talk about uh, his season and the streak that he had. And I also just want to uh, discuss where the Giants are as they go into this off day, finishing off 16 games in a row, uh, their longest stretch of the season without an off day. They do have one finally tomorrow in Chicago. And I mean, I believe they're flying tonight out of Colorado, but they could be flying tomorrow. But Giants ended up going 16 and 10. I'm not sure if I already said that, but it was they did a really good job of playing well during this difficult stretch. And now they're really in the home stretch of the season. And so Logan Webb, 14 straight starts, allowing two earned runs or fewer at 24 years old. It's the longest stretch of two earned runs or fewer in San Francisco Giants history. And like their, you know, uh, best start in 100 through 140 games thing, this is dating back to the early part of the 1900s uh, for Logan Webb. So, you know, the fact that the streak ended in Denver, I don't really take anything away from him. He threw the ball as well as at any point during any of the games during that streak. Uh, he kind of unraveled. I mean, I wouldn't say he unraveled, but Coors Field happened. It's just a, a really tough place to pitch, and he ended up giving up a couple runs, I think, in the it was the seventh inning, and he ends up coming out of the game after seven innings, three earned runs allowed. That's just a fabulous start. It I've heard other people say this, and I agree. Uh, three runs in seven innings is kind of like one run in seven innings anywhere else. So it's been a while since I kind of just paused and looked at these numbers for Webb. We're constantly talking about, yes, 2.64 ERA, fantastic. 2.82 fielding independent pitching, fantastic. 2.79 expected fielding independent pitching, on and on and on, 3.38 expected ERA. But when you take uh, those numbers and compare them to the league, and also make an adjustment for park effects. And Logan Webb being a pitcher in a relatively pitcher-friendly park, he actually gets penalized a bit by park effects. But these numbers are close to 40% above average compared to the league and park adjusted. So he has just been an ace. I mean, he has pitched like an ace this season. And he's made 21 starts and 15 of them uh, I mean, 14 were two earned runs or fewer, and then uh, three earned runs in, in his last start here in Colorado, which is another fabulous start. So the overall season numbers just look excellent. And if you look at the projections now for Logan Webb, pretty much all of the projection systems on fan graphs here see him as a guy who's going to have a mid threes ERA moving forward, which is just really good in this day and age. The average ERA in the game right now is is um, around four or higher. I'm, I'm pulling it up as we speak. Uh, the league stats for starting pitchers, uh, the league average ERA is 4.31, and he's in the mid two, so about two runs better. The average in the National League for starting pitchers is 4.18, and so that's why his numbers are, are 35, uh, I said close to 40, but it's about 35% above average and so he's just been phenomenal uh, the average home run rate is 1.27 per nine innings for starting pitchers 
and the average ground ball rate is 44%. So when we look at Logan Webb, as I try to go back here, Logan Webb is at 0 0.60 home runs per nine innings, under half of what the league average is, and his ground ball rate is 60.8%. Uh, as I said, the league average being 44%. So, you know, as a ground ball machine, he keeps the ball on the ground, obviously, and in the ballpark. Uh, he's been able to do that over the course of his entire career. He's now thrown 213 and a third innings, has a career 3.84 ERA, but that number just keeps coming down, down, down. And the peripherals on his career are uh, significantly better. But this is the year he's been able to just put it all together and like I said, 24 years old, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it just bodes really well for the future of this team because he's under club control for many years to come. And so many kind of new players have emerged this season for the Giants, like another guy being Lamont Wade Jr., who was a topic of conversation today. He and Logan Webb, both under club control through the 2025 season, so they can be retained if the Giants so choose through 2025 that's four additional seasons after this year and you've got guys like steven duggar under uh, club control for four additional seasons mike yastrzemski four additional seasons tyler rogers four additional seasons um you know there are others as well not all are shown on this site that i use to to look at this stuff but giants are in a good position they have all kinds of financial uh, flexibility coming up with so many big contracts coming off the books. So not only are they having this great season at 90 and 50, uh, but they are set up really well for the future as well. So we will continue to monitor the Reds and the Padres and keep you updated about the Giants magic number. Just know I believe it is seven after this win and it could be six entering tomorrow. So keep coming back to Locked on Giants. We update you every single weekday uh, with an entire show and definitely talking about magic numbers, uh, magic number to clinch the division as well. It, it helps if the Dodgers can lose a game. So go Cardinals tonight. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to be doing a mailbag. So look out on Twitter for the prompt. You can follow me there at Ben Kaspik if you're on YouTube. Uh, this is the Twitter handle right there. Last name is spelled K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow for the mailbag. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.